Hi, my name is Juliana. I am originally from Belarus, but I've lived in the UK for quite a few years now. And I am a second year student studying medicine at UCL. So a typical day in my life would look something like waking up at around 7.30 and just cooking breakfast, like speaking to my flatmates. And then because I live with three other medics, we all travel to campus together. And most days we have a 9 a.m. lecture. And usually they are two lectures, then we have a break and then two lectures. So whenever I have a break during the day, I usually just go to the library and catch up on work that I have to do so that the rest of my day after that is free. Some days we have workshops, sometimes we have anatomy dissections, but that usually all finishes by four. And then I would go to the gym with my friends that's also on campus, come back to our, to our flat, just cook dinner, chill for the rest of the evening. On some days we might go out and do something. So for example, on Tuesdays UCL has jazz night, which we sometimes go to just to see our friends, enjoy some music. So my three pieces of advice for someone wanting to study medicine at any university, show a lot of who you are and your personality because I do think that they really care not just about your academics and what you do outside of like school and university, but also what kind of person you are. So showing that you have a mindset towards growing and becoming a better person, better doctor is really important. So you do that through reflecting on everything that you mentioned. Second piece of advice would be to not be afraid to talk about mistakes and failures because they also appreciate that. I think that if you don't fail, that means you just haven't tried hard enough, you just haven't like aimed high enough. It's all right to talk about something that you failed at as long as you mention what you learned from it and what you can take away from that. Um, and so my third piece of advice I think is quite basic, but just focusing on your extracurriculars and things you do outside of school, because I think universities are really looking to find doctors that have a work-life balance. So whether that's exercise and uh, music or like everyone I know who's a medical student does something outside. And so for example, at UCL we have board societies that are just for medics, where like most of the people in the teams are medics and we have all sorts of sports. So since getting into UCL and starting medicine, I try to remain ambitious and high achieving. And one of the ways that I do that is just taking in as many opportunities as I can, because the number of things that UCL offers compared to school is just enormous. So it's impossible to do everything, but I try to do my best to do and try as many things as I can. So for example, I joined um, a late law scholarship, which is a scholarship that just goes around different universities over, all over the world. And over the summer, I did a project looking into like mitochondrial protein synthesis, which was really fun, just worked in a lab for six weeks. This coming summer, I'm going to Mexico for six weeks with the same scholarship to do something that I haven't decided what yet, but uh, just trying to do as many things as possible that is outside of medicine. So I'm not just going to lectures, but like writing a literature review on something or working in a lab for a little bit or writing in the like ROMS, which is the medical school's magazine, helps meet people, but also just make sure that you're not too like bugged down on the medicine part of it and you're enjoying everything else as well. So within medicine, something that I'm really interested in is neuroscience and psychiatry. So we actually just started our neuroscience and behavioral module a few weeks ago, actually. And I find it fascinating because it is so difficult to understand. And the anatomy and the neuroanatomy and the pharmacology of it is all quite daunting. But then once you do understand it, it makes so much sense because I think unlike immunology, which we learned last year, or like circulation and breathing, which was to do with the heart and like the respiratory system, the symptoms are very visible. So like you tap this tendon and like the knee jerks up and you're like you understand why this works and I find that very interesting and working with neurological disorders can also be very difficult because a lot of the times they're progressive which means they don't really get better so a few weeks ago we went on a ward where we met a few patients that had like Parkinson's multiple sclerosis Alzheimer's and that's really hard to see because you know that they will never get better so it's just management at this point seeing someone like be really vulnerable with you and be telling you the most like difficult things for them to say and for them to trust you with it and for you to be able to help, I just think it's such a massive privilege and I find it really interesting and I really hope to study neurology and neuroscience more next year. So I think the biggest reason as to why I chose to study medicine, even though I think in the beginning it was subconscious because I've wanted to do it for a very long time, was the balance between the scientific aspect of it and the problem solving aspect of being given a lot of random information and having to put it all together and try to find patterns and solutions and I just find like the mental stimulation of it very interesting um, but also the helping people aspect and just the being surrounded by by someone and by people like I never would want to work 
by myself just because I get so much happiness and energy from seeing someone who like really opens up to me or seeing some how much of a difference I can make by just listening to them for 10 minutes. It just makes me so happy like internally on a fulfillment level that I can't really imagine doing anything else where you get as much contact with people that share so many things that they sometimes are scared to share with their closest friends and their family members but then they come and tell you and they've met you like 15 minutes ago. I just think it's a privilege and I would love to be able to help them as much as I can. Over the last few years, my perspective on medicine changed quite a bit because before I thought that being a good doctor meant knowing all of the drugs, knowing and understanding all of the anatomy. But I actually think it's a lot more about what kind of person you are and what kind of presence and aura you have around you. And I think that's actually equally as, if not more important than like the knowledge of it. Because a lot of the times I've met doctors that may know everything in the textbooks, but they just don't make the other person feel comfortable with them. They aren't kind, they don't listen. A lot of the times patients come to see doctors because they are just simply stressed about something. And it's not the actual issue that's stressing them out. It's something completely different. And you need to be able to make that connection with the patient and just really make them feel better. University in general, I mean, like it's a six year course, I have ages, but taking it as an opportunity to grow as a person, not just learn the science of it. So working on being quite calm and like managing your emotions, learning on being confident, being able to speak to anyone that you just, you have just met. And I think that's actually really important because the best doctors that I've met even before medical school, since like childhood, are not the ones that knew the most or that came up with an answer the fastest, but the ones that like smiled and reassured me and made a joke. and. That's the kind of doctor that I strive to be in the future as well. So I think my goal after finishing medical school is definitely working as a doctor, but practicing on being a kind, empathetic and compassionate doctor that makes the patients feel heard and listened to, as well as going a bit more into research because I think it's my duty as a healthcare professional to stay on top of everything that's going on. So science never stops evolving. So all of the research that I'm doing at the moment, even if I don't end up going into mitochondrial, like protein synthesis, something very, very niche, at least I've learned the skills of reading academic papers, which is a really totally diff different skill to A-levels. I've learned how to work in a lab if I need to, if I need to do that. So that allows me to essentially show up the best way that I can for my patients. So that's just what I want to try and do, just continue learning. Because I just really don't want to be one of those doctors when I'm 70 and someone comes up to me with a new surgical technique and I'm like, no, I know what's best. Uh, so that's, I think that's my main goal for after uni. Mm -hmm.